Oi, how you going? Today we're joining my good friend Pete on his boat Sand Dollar and Pete's going to be giving us a demonstration on how to successfully dock his boat single-handed. First, let's just talk a bit about the lead up to docking a boat. Of course, there's a range of considerations. Is it a marina pen? Am I going bow in or stern in? Is it a tight fit or do I have plenty of room? What's the wind and current doing? What will my departure look like? Is it a clear run out? And for monohull vessels, what's my prop walk going to do? Let's first talk about prop walk. In short, prop walk is the impact engaging reverse will have on the stern of your boat and it's a product of your prop's direction of rotation. Does it rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise? That is, as you're approaching the dock, you'll want to engage reverse to bring you to a stop and this will kick in your prop walk. Some boats will pull the stern to starboard, others will pull to port. Which way your prop walk pulls will usually determine the ideal side to tie up with. Port tie up or starboard tie up? My old boat, she pulls to starboard, so I will go for a starboard tie up whenever possible. If you know your prop walk, and if it's your boat, you better get to know it quickly, you'll be able to use your prop walk to help you pull onto the dock neat and tidy just like a pro. All right, Pete, tell us what you can about prop walk. All righty, prop walk. If this were fitted to a boat, this would be called a right-handed prop because in order to provide thrust, forward thrust, it's turning to the right or it's turning clockwise when viewed from behind the boat. So this means when the boat is going forwards, the propeller turns in this direction. When the boat wants to go backwards or stop, the propeller will go in the opposite direction, as reverse. And prop walk becomes quite evident when you go in reverse. When the propeller spins this way, it is driving water forwards, which stops the boat from going forwards, and eventually will start pulling the boat backwards. But not only does the propeller spin in this direction and drive water forwards, it will also grab water and push water out in this direction as the blades rotate. So pushing water in this direction has to push the propeller in the opposite direction. Other factors are current and wind. Ideally, you will want to travel into the current to tie up. And if all the gods are on your side, you'll have a gentle breeze blowing you onto the dock as well. As you'll see Pete doing with Sand Dollar, he's going to make his final approach on an angle. This is a perfect approach, especially when your prop walk pulls the butt of your boat into the dock. So you've tied up like a pro. You impressed yourself and all those aboard your boat. You've got what you came into the dock for. Now it's time to depart. Remember you came in against the current with a gentle breeze blowing you on. These factors may not necessarily work in your favour for the departure or they may have changed since you tied up. I suggest you take a moment to think through how you're going to do this without it all going to shit. This is where springing comes into play. Springing is the fine art of using a rope on the bow or stern to hold one end of the boat secure while you use your engine and or current and wind to bring the other end of the boat out for a neat and tidy departure. For example, you've got a light current on your bow and a boat tied up behind you and in front of you. The best approach here is to use the current and your engine to spring off the stern allowing your bow to move out sufficiently from the dock for you to make a free and safe departure. Once your bow is free and clear, you can release your stern line and make a safe and relaxed departure. In this instance, your stern line will have one end secured to the boat, just be looped around a cleat on the dock and held firm back on board, so that once you're ready, you can just swiftly pull the line back aboard and depart safely. When the line is being pulled aboard, do it swiftly, do it smoothly. Don't let it slip loosely into the water because your prop will love to try and eat it. Let's now see how Captain Pete goes through this manoeuvre and remember he's doing this single handed with a small amount of current, a light breeze blowing onto the dock and a lot of slop from the wakes of passing boats and he's done it before. So Pete tell me what's, uh, what's the normal considerations that you would uh, take into play in preparing to go into a dock? Alright Boyd. Um... First of all, the weather, uh, tidal influences, wind influences, anything like that uh, will have an effect on the boat and how it manoeuvres. Second of all, the dock. Um, if you can get to your dock first and you've had a look at it, there's huge advantages in that. 
you have an idea of the height of the dock above the water, that'll tell you how high to set your fenders. You will also get an idea of how far the cleats are on the dock, and it'll also give you an idea of the lay of the land, the way the wind is blowing across the berth, as well as uh, the way the tide might move through the berthing area that you're going to approach. So we'll set up the fenders, we'll set up some mooring lines, and we'll show you how to do it uh, single-handed. Most of it is being prepared. In preparation for going ashore, first thing I normally do is set up my, my dock lines. All right, one of the most important things with any of your mooring lines uh, during your setup process is to make sure they're ready to be deployed once you arrive at the dock. So for that reason, it's firmly on the cleat, it cannot come off. So I run this line slightly aft, outside of all of the lifelines on the boat. The bulk of the line sits back on the deck, and then the tail of the line hangs outside. Alright, port side bow line time. I make sure all of the slack is well inside the tow rail or the bulwark. And I run that well aft. You'll often find that the bow of the boat will blow off the dock. And if it starts blowing off and you've got a line up there, it's much, much harder to reach. Okay, fenders. Uh, we've got a fairly calm day. We're just going into the dock uh, for a short period of time. So we're only going to set up two fenders. Normally if I was staying on a dock for longer, I'd put out extra fenders. So the way I like to do it is I drop them over the side until they touch the water, and I bring them back up just a few inches so they're out of the water. The way I like to tie them off is with a round turn and two half hitches. So that's all the way around either your lifeline, or in this case the solid rail, like so, and two half hitches back around the loaded part of the rope. That allows the fender to do this all day and all night without coming undone. There's a variety of ways of tying it off and I haven't found a better way than that yet. What are your final considerations as you're going in here? Uh, it's pretty benign today, Boyd, but we need to keep an eye on the wind and we need to keep an eye on the tide and any other boats that may be coming or going from the dock. the paddle wheel effect to bring his stern in. It'll be neat, it'll be tidy, and it won't be a problem. As you can see, there's another boat nice and close behind. The paddle wheel's kicked in beautifully. You right there, mate? Look at that, just like clockwork. Pete's obviously done this a few times, so uh, that'd be a 10 out of 10 docking, I'd say. So here Pete's now just securing his stern springer. He's then going to grab his forward springer, secure that, and these two lines are the ones that are going to be taking most of the load on the boat. Take up the tension, a couple of quick figure eights, and a few hitches on the end of the cleat to hold it secure. Job done. You know, the bow line, which was prepared earlier, it easily wraps around the cleat, very slack. Not as much tension on that because the load's been carried by the two springers. And now Pete's walking down the back, grabs the stern line, secures that, and now he has a vessel that's nice and tight and neat alongside the dock. Bow line on now, boys. So, full 360 degrees around your cleat. Or across over the top in both directions, and then simply finish it off with a couple of hitches. So here, here we are now. You'll see that Pete's got his bow line on, his stern line on, and two springers. The boat's nice and secure, and she ain't going anywhere. But, uh, so tell us about your mooring lines, mate, and uh, the effectiveness of each of them. Yeah, right, oh boy. Um, I like to put nearly all the boats load on the spring lines. Uh, because they run at the angle that they do, it stops the boat snatching and um, it, it really does make it a lot more comfortable at the dock. And then the stern line and bow line, as you can see, are both loose at the moment. They're just there. They'll take up any twisting motion that might come So I uh, load up the springs and the boat sits a lot more comfortably. The departure. Tell me about uh, just your thought processes going through the departure. How do you... Uh... How do you do that in this instance here? Uh, where we are, Boyd, a little bit tricky at the moment. 
because my prop walk will work against me getting off the dock and we've got a light breeze we've got about 10 knots pushing the boat onto the dock so for me here i'd probably take all the lines off the boat can't go anywhere the wind will hold it on the dock and start working the bow out just start pushing it out gently until i get a reasonable angle step on give it some gas and get going we've moved sand dollar to the southern end of the dock and uh, another power boat's come in and he's given us the opportunity here while the drone's up in the air to give us a quick demonstration on how a power boat's getting out doing the same thing he's bringing off the bow and reversing out so pete's now going to give us a demonstration on how to beautifully depart a dock when you've got a little bit of wind blowing you on let's see how this goes Obviously these scenarios can be made a little bit easier if you've got crew, you've got your skipper on the helm, someone on the dock, pushing you off the dock so that when you turn you're not going to spin your ass back onto the dock and cause yourself a heap of damage. So Pete's now removed all of his lines, he's removed them in an order too that keeps him safe, meaning he can't blow back onto the boat that's currently tied up behind him. So he's getting all of his mooring lines making sure that they're safe. He's now pushing on his shrouds to make sure that his bow is in a, in a good position to start once he climbs the board and engages forward gear. There he goes. So now a little bit of forward. And off he goes. And that's docking a boat single-handed. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Until next time, look forward to seeing you on the water soon.